Justin's a great player. I'm sure he'll be able to make adjustments. Tyler is not really combining the Arceus and Jolteon with too much else. He's got the Crobat VMAX in here, the Hoopa V that is really important, but no Malamar or anything like that. It's really just Arceus, Crobat VMAX, and the Hoopa V. Looks are ready to send things down to the table. These players are all set up, ready to get the action started. Once again, Tyler up against Justin. We're going to have a great match here. The stakes are on the line. Both of these players need to win this match to advance into the second day of competition. Put themselves at a chance to make top cut to get some championship points, walk away with some prize money, and of course, some PC T TCG booster packs. But it looks like we've got some basics already here. We're ready to get these prize cards laid out. And uh, we've seen this again. Some of these pieces can be pretty important in these matchups. Justin there on the right, we just saw Tyler here on the left. Players are setting out those prizes and one of the most important things in a Pokemon TCG match is figuring out what is in your prizes. Two double turbo energy, not the best. A memory capsule as well could be a little awkward for Tyler. Not anything too bad on Justin's side. One Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, but does play two copies of the card and you really only ever need one in most matches, so it should be okay. Yeah, it never feels good to have a great attacker in the prize cards, but uh, Justin's been able to work out multiple scenarios when put in a tough spot. We're getting into this, the final Swiss round of day number one here at Secaucus Regional, starting things off. Tyler will be kicking things off. Has the EV uh, one of those beautiful alternate arts that come out of our recent expansions? Yeah, from the trainer gallery in Brilliant Stars. I love the fact that the optimal EV is the one that got the full art, which is really cool. It's attack V search, I think lets you just search out a bunch of different Pokemon. Tyler right away quick balls and discards a Pumpkaboo and grabs a Crobat. So this hand must be pretty weak if right away Tyler's needing to rely on Dark Asset. Yeah, most Arceus decks, especially this one, really rely on finding that turn one energy attachment. Oh, yeah, just looking at his hand, has Pat the Peak, does have the energy, but feels that the rest of the hand is not up to par to put something together the following turn. We're actually going to see the energy attachment to wow. Eevee <laughs> and the Zigzagoon just to place a damage counter more so than out of the hand. There's the Crobat filling the hand up to six. Do we see an Arceus? There's an Ultra Ball and a few Arceus V-Star for the following turn, kind of bailing Tyler out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the problem here though is that the energy got attached to the Eevee and we've talked about this so much, how important that turn one energy attachment is to have on to your Arceus. The only energy acceleration option that Tyler has in the deck is Raihan. So that will only be active after Justin has taken a KO. So there's not a way for Tyler to pull off a Trinity Nova on the next turn. No energy switch plays, no Moltres V, nothing like that. Yeah, as you mentioned before, V-Search is a very solid attack. Allows you to search three V-Pokemon out yes. of the deck. And it doesn't specify basics. You can look up some V-Star Pokemon, but... V-Max. Yeah, V-Max as well. And we only have those two, but <laughs> those three. But it's good <laughs> enough at this point. But Justin, going to go oh, ahead and... Uh, don't, don't forget V-Union. Oh, of course, the V-Union <laughs> Pokemon as well. I wish we saw a little bit more of them, but they're a little bit too hard to pull off currently. Justin is... Looking at this opening hand, it looks like there's an Urshifu there, a Rapid Strike energy. It's always a little awkward de depending on when you want to put your Urshifu in play. Sometimes it's best to just throw it down on a turn that you can Raihan and go for the 100 Furious Blows. And oh, is that just a strafe? Yeah, Justin's hand does have a Drizzile, so there is still some following draw, but I think just wants to apply some pressure to this Eevee especially if it's going to most likely get knocked out. But we see the Arceus V-Star come down right away. There is the V-Star power. Interesting to see what will get grabbed off of this Star Birth. Like you mentioned in the list, no way to, to power this Pokemon up in a single turn without having any energy on it, besides Raihan. But Justin smartly not going to take a knockout on this Eevee, understands that Raihan is a very, very viable way for this Arceus to start swinging as soon as this turn. Yeah, something Tyler could do is get the Jolteon and then get an Arceus V. I believe there is a double turbo energy in hand. So you could evolve into the Jolteon, which I think is the obvious grab here. You want to turn off the potential shady dealings. And then you could attach a double turbo energy to a benched Arceus V and go for the Trinity Charge. This is also a pretty solid play. I believe Tyler just grabbed a supporter card so you can you know, th still throw a double turbo onto the benched Arceus. And while you won't be attacking this turn, you're still setting up for a future turn attack when you know your opponent just did nothing and you're also putting that Jolteon down. Yeah, Jolteon is going to be the best card in this deck. There is no way for Justin to remove the tool card. We'll have to knock out the Jolteon That's right. in order to get these abilities back online. We will see Starbirth grab the Jolteon. There is the Professor's Research to dig through the deck. 
Big Charm as well on the Arceus means that something like 100 Furious Blows will be 10 short of knocking out. That could be some big math come later. Yeah, Tyler does still play the Dunsparce as well, so that's definitely a card that he's going to want to get down if he can as soon as possible because its ability, Mysterious Nest, prevents all weakness being dealt to colorless Pokemon. So that will keep Arceus V-Star from being easily knocked out by Justin's Urshifu's. Yeah, and Jolteon is an engine that has popped up a lot more recently now that people understand that Tool Scrapper is not a card in a lot of lists. Tool removal is on the low, and this may be the event that Jolteon has sort of jumped onto things, is actually going to opt to retreat into the Zigzagoon, pass the turnover, I believe there is a double turbo. Yeah, double turbo energy yep. on that Arceus, so we'll be able to attack the following turn. What's oh, the topic there? and Justin has oh, a wow. Drizzile there in hand, but can't use it. You could evolve still, but... It would be to no benefit since Shady Dealings is not active thanks to Jolteon. So Tyler's strategy paying off perfectly here right away just on turn number two. He yeah, does have access, I believe, top deck the Mew for turn. Okay. That is the card Justin is still playing. A lot of these American, this American testing group that brought this deck to Europe for the international championships decided to play the Mew. Mysterious Tail, a very solid ability. Able to find any item card off the top six. What do we see here? There is an evolution incense that could potentially grab the Urshifu VMAX yep. come down the line. Already committed the air balloon, so that means even if there's no Dunsparce in play, this Urshifu will not be, will not be dealing enough to take a knockout in one hit onto this Arceus V-Star. Yeah, something I guess Justin could try to set up for a G-Max Rapid Flow on the next turn. Has the Evolution Incense to get the the Urshifu V-Max, of course, has the energy in hand. Just needs this Mew to get out of the active spot. So can leave it active for a turn, and either Tyler will KO it, which will allow Justin to bring up the Rapid Strike Urshifu, or Tyler will just have to pass if he can't find a way to move the Zigzagoon, and then Justin can maybe uh, Mysterious Nest or Mysterious Tail into another Scoop Up Net or a Switch. It looks like things will pass over here to Tyler. Uh, Is, or, oh, wait, maybe not. Uh, I think just yeah, thinking Justin's about... Yeah, still thinking here. Hasn't mm -hmm. attached an energy or anything yet. It has a second Rapid Strike energy. So what he could be thinking about is just putting that second Rapid Strike energy so that he can use the Darkness energy to retreat next turn. But losing two Rapid Strike energies to a G-Max Rapid Flow feels really, really bad, especially when you're only playing three copies of the card. Yeah, it's one of those things when you're playing this deck, you have to manage your resources so well when playing through this. We will see the Evolution Incense get played, can grab the only remaining Urshifu VMAX out of the deck. I'm sure that will be the grab as can't evolve in the, I mean, you can evolve in the Drizzile, but you're not going to get that benefit of why you are yeah. playing that card in order to get the Shady Dealings to find yourself those trainer cards. This is Justin's first full deck search, so I do expect him to do some prize checking, try to figure out what he has access to, what won't be available and try to navigate things from there. If Tyler misses an attack this coming turn and Justin can pull off the G-Max Rapid Flow, I actually think Justin's in a pretty solid spot. Would take multiple prizes on, you know, maybe the Zigzagoon and the Jolteon, or could even prep the Arceus to be KO'd a bit more easily if he expects Tyler to be playing the Dunsparce, of course. And Justin does decide to put the second Rapid Strike energy. That is a tough call, but... It's what Justin felt like he needed to do. Yeah, you have to make the decision if you think the Mew will get knocked out, if there's something like the Scoop of Net in hand. If not, then this play is usually correct because it means that Rapid Flow will be pretty safe. And look at that right away. Grabs the Dunsparce off of the Capture Energy. We'll see if Tyler has a way to pivot the Zigzagoon out of the active, looking at the rest of the hand. Looks like has Marnie as well, so... He's going to need to find something. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Justin will get at least a little bit bailed out of this, potentially. We'll get some new cards to work with. Does have access now to Raihan. No Darkness Energy, however, in the discard pile as the Rapid Strike Energy was committed instead of that Darkness Energy. I don't think Tyler got a way to move this Zigzagoon, and yeah, just has to pass it back over to Justin here, who will use the Muse Mysterious Tale looking for an item card. There's Energy Search, so that at minimum can get an Energy card for you to retreat this Mew, and then G-Max Rapid Flow can target down the Jolteon and the Dunsparce. It could also target down the Jolteon and the Bidoof, maybe if Justin wants to value getting rid of that draw power. It does always feel really solid, though, to take out Dunsparce when you can. Yeah, and the only recovery card for Tyler is that Ordinary Rod. So the only way to bring things back will be that one copy of Ordinary Rod, and you're going to have to use it pretty early right away uh, on the pretty much 
uh, first couple of turns to be able to put those Pokemon back. And uh, this is one of the weird situations where if you can get another Eevee down the following turn, then things can get tricky. But even giving just a single turn of Shady Dealings is going to be big, but it won't be as impactful if there's only one Sobble in play. I'm sure Justin is really wishing that he'd put the basic darkness energy on this Urshifu last turn because, uh, of course, Tyler ended up marnying him. But, of course, no way that Justin could have known that. So the Jolteon's the obvious target here off the G-Max Rapid Flow. I wonder what Justin will go with. Is it Dunsparce or the Bidoof? It seems to be that Justin thinks Dunsparce is the best choice. Yeah, can't blame him there. Able to take prize cards, potentially put, pretty much put Tyler on a clock as well to say, you need to find a way to get Dunsparce back into play. Otherwise, my Urshifu can come up, deal some solid damage, and eventually maybe finish it off with something like a quick shooting or a way to place some more damage counters. Air Balloon will be the tool left on Urshifu as long as it is alive and not knocked out. So we will see the B-Barrel come down off of the Ultra Ball. Industrious and Scissors online. It's going to be very easy for Tyler to just draw through the deck every turn, get some more cards into play. But the first things first, needs to get the Zigzagoon out of the active. Tyler does play the Hoopa V, which is an extremely good card against Rapid Strike Urshifu, but Tyler doesn't have a way to power it up in one turn. Can use Raihan to get one energy on it, and then attach for turn, that's a second, but it requires three energy cards. So since Tyler doesn't have any of those energy switch tricks that we mentioned earlier on, there's no way to power it up in one single turn. He has to Trinity Nova onto it, which gives Justin a turn to try and deal with it. There is the Hoopa coming down into play. Looks like Ultra Ball as well can thin the hand out, maybe find another Pokemon to build up. Does still have another Eevee in deck, so we could yeah. see the Eevee get grabbed to threaten the Memory Capsule play yet again the following turn. But uh, it looks like does not have access to the Eevee, uh, so must have had to discard it a little earlier on, or just choosing not to grab it at this point. Yeah, I think it, uh, or maybe the Jolteon was hitting the discard pile there, so it doesn't mm -hmm. really mind dis uh, not getting the... EV out into play. Does have capture energy in hand, so that is the way that Tyler can retreat this Zigzagoon this coming turn. Also could just be using the capture energy to get the uh, <laughs> EV in play, I guess. Oh, yeah, I do just see the one EV in there, so I think the second one should be in the deck. Yeah, really valuing, just trying to draw as many cards off Industrious and Scissors. Filling the hand up to five, does find the switch, has capture energy as well to grab another basic, but no ordinary rod here. Really what you want to find to be able to put this Dunsparce back into play. So there's that EV in the deck. Tyler will choose to bench it so now try a couple of turns away or one turn away at least from resetting up that lock getting that ability set up yeah i think the main issue we didn't see the eevee grab is i believe the second memory capsule is in the prize cards that is uh, not an option yeah but is you know potentially going to be taking prizes here mm -hmm. in the coming turn so it's still good to start developing it because you need to find a jolteon as well so you can't get the full lock up right away but still solid overall Two energy going onto the Hoopa. That is ready to start attacking into Urshifu's. And also an energy onto the Crobat. Crobat VMAX is a very risky attacker in this matchup. It is a three-prize Pokemon that is weak to fighting that is not protected by Dunsparce. And 300 HP as well means it's perfect math for a Gale Thrust to take a knockout onto Crobat. But decides, hey, I need to accelerate some more energy, maybe thin them out of the deck a little bit. Crobat is a good enough attacker down the line if I maybe want to... V, uh, v max the turn, I'm going to maybe be taking a big knockout. But action's going to be on Justin to put something together. Has access to these water Pokemon's abilities. We'll have one Shady Dealings online. No rare candy or ways to skip stages of evolution. But hey, one is enough at this point. You can uh, open up the door for a lot of plays. Maybe something like a Bird Keeper as well. Looking at the handle, what the option is. Looks like deciding what to do sequence-wise. Justin is a master of sequencing. Understands how to do things in the proper order to find exactly what cards you are looking for. Valuing using this mysterious tail to start things off. We'll see what item card there are. If there's any item cards, no, none item, no item cards off the top six cards. Yeah, and we see that Cheryl there off the Mysterious Tail. Not a card you can grab since it is a supporter, but if Justin could have found a way to get a Drizzile, he could grab that card out of the deck. Actually, I think I see a Drizzile there in hand. Cheryl would be a pretty decent play this turn to fully heal this Urshifu. Of course, the Hoopa is threatening a KO pretty quickly since it is both a Psychic and Darkness type. Mm -hmm. But Justin's actually playing a really cool tech card to deal with the Hoopa V. He has the Celebi Amazing Rare from Vivid Voltage in the deck. And what the Celebi does is it has an energy press attack, which for 30 damage deals 30 more damage for each energy on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it deals 30 base and then 30 more for each energy attached, which does get you two enough to knock out the Hoopa V. 
Yeah, I believe 30 damage, yep, for each energy on it. So I think in some cases you may need a choice belt to get there. I want to make yeah, sure I, I double check. If it's 30 plus or 30 times, but yeah, there is definitely ways that Justin can get there and get that one hit KO. Yeah, it's going to be the big card in this matchup. I know him and John Angler running around with that card in the yep. deck. So uh, they've decided this is what the best option is to play in order to really deal with the Hoopa, the card that has been included in the deck, to deal with this as best as possible. Yeah, so it is 30 times, so it does need the Choice Belt. But with the Intellian Engine, it is easy to pull those plays off. Scoop of Net does move the Mew out of the active onto the bench. There is a boss's orders in hand, and... Justin wants to target down this Crobat right away, take the easy two prizes, and he's moving very, very quickly here, taking two more, going down to just two prizes remaining. Yeah, this is smart because I think Justin's trying to bait Tyler into making that play where you tackle the Hoopa and then open up the gates for the Celebi Amazing Rare to come and close things out, and especially if Tyler doesn't have that list knowledge yet that that card is in the deck. This could be exactly what you want if you're Justin, but I think a big thing here to note, can Tyler find the Ordinary Rod? There it is, finds the Ordinary Rod, has the Evolution Incense as well, but that Memory Capsule is yeah. still in the prize cards, which means because Jolteon is not able to come online, we could see a Shady Dealings and Teleon come in to easily grab the pieces needed for Justin. Yeah, Justin definitely has the lines set up. I think he is playing to maybe like a Galarian Moltres endgame, potentially, of course, Moltres is only really doing anything when your opponent has taken prizes, and Tyler is actually yet to take any prize cards at this point. So Justin, with a pretty steep lead, has plenty of time to set up whatever he wants to, really not feeling that, that much pressure. We see those Pokemon getting put back into the deck, the Jolteon and the Dunsparce to get Mysterious Nest back into play so this Arceus can feel a little bit safer in play. There's the Jolteon coming in. Again, that abusing character rare coming through. I like to see some nice artworks. I, I always appreciate them. You'll hear me time and time again. I'm a big fan for streams. And we actually see the energy attachment on to the Jolteon to fill the hand up a little bit more. Oh, finds the Dunsparce. Hits the Dunsparce. Wow, that is a big time grab. Absolutely. And Tyler able to take the one hit knockout on the Urshifu V Max. And it's going to take three prize cards off of this. Let's see if that memory capsule is one of the grabs. Oh, just one card away from getting it. One card away is Justin's going to look at the discard pile, see what options are available. Looks like top decks, the training court, can open up and another energy grab. Potentially, this Galarian Moltres has another energy in hand as well. We could maybe see a little bit more aggression when it comes to card draw. It does have that Cynthia's ambition to fill the hand up. Can thin this down to practically zero cards, it looks like, yeah, at I this point. I think that Cynthia's ambition is one of the last prizes for Ooh. Justin. A really key card in this matchup or in this deck, I should say, in general, just for getting you whatever piece you may want. Of course, Evolution Incense here can grab that Shady Dealings Intellion, most likely, and that can just set Justin up with all kinds of different plays. We already saw the Moltres there in hand. Justin can't reach for a one-hit knockout this turn, but he could hit pretty hard if he wants to. And there it is, grab the Shady Dealings in Teleon. Shady Dealings to grab any two pieces. Looks like eyeing up the Raihan at this point. Uh, but it uh, looks like we'll instead opt to grab the Professor's Research. No access to Cynthia's Ambition. And you get an extra card to choose what you want to grab. Maybe something like the pivoting option. You no longer have access to Air Balloon, which is the best tool to have on your Mew to be able to pivot in right. and out every turn. Could maybe grab Quick Ball. There's a lot of options here for Justin, but I think that the important thing to note has card advantage now. It was really struggling to do much when it came, really relying off of Mew to find the raw pieces to, to get what's needed. And it looks like it will be level ball to start getting more Sobbles into play to hopefully have an explosive next couple of turns. It's really interesting because normally this would be very bad if just at turn four or whatever, you were finally getting Sobbles into play. But Justin is pretty decently ahead, of course, only winning by one prize at this point. But as every knockout Tyler takes will lead to more damage being built up by the Moltres. And Justin will utilize Training Court to bring another energy back. Malevolent Charge gets two energies onto the Moltres, and Professor's Research will draw a fresh hand of seven. Two Drizziles there in the hand, a couple of Quick Balls as well to work with. And there is that Metacham with the Yoga Loop. I don't think Justin's done too much to set up for any Yoga Loop plays, so I'm not super expecting us to see anything happen there but it has become one of my favorite cards in this format because you can just do so much with it and win games out of nowhere.
cards that are most versatile really shine in these decks that have so many turns of planning to set up the math, to set up the numbers, to then do one of the most powerful effects in the game, to take an extra turn. But it uh, looks like no energy here did have the pivoting option in Escape Rope to maybe take a prize. So uh, we haven't seen the Mew come down yet, so maybe looking for something like an energy surge. What are the cards to grab? Level Ball is a potential option at this point. And Quick Ball as well, so this is where you've got to take a decision. There are already two Drizzile in hand at this point, so Level Ball and most would grab the last Sobble. But at the same time, how much do you really value that compared to maybe grabbing something else like a basic that can't be grabbed? But it looks like Justin wants to go for a full-fledged turn in the following uh, to just grab as many Sobbles in play, get all these Drizziles, maybe do a big scoop up net play eventually, just start grabbing all the trainers possible out of the deck. Yeah, I think what Justin is most likely trying to set up here is a Fiery Wrath KO on the Hoopa. Hoopa has 220 hit points, so if Tyler takes one more knockout, that Hoopa will be going down to any one hit. So if Justin can get the Moltres set up on the bench, which we see he already has, all he needs next turn is an energy and a boss's orders, and that can close the game out. Game plans seem pretty cut for Tyler at this point, but you've got to get things rolling at right away. You're going at the two prizes, things get really scary because then an energy in combination with the boss's orders is enough to take a knockout onto that Hoopa. So you've got to take care of this Moltres now. If you take another prize card, you're not getting there, but we already see boss's orders in hand. That is a potential option for Tyler to really remove this threat that Justin was able to get down the following, or the previous turn, rather. Yeah, it just takes away most of what Justin tried to set up last turn. Let's see if that's the route Tyler goes for. Marnie could be a decent option as well because Justin is just sitting on a massive hand right now. Yeah, that, is that the deck? <laughs> well, there, there's maybe 10 cards left in there. Quite a large hand. Tyler does grab the Bibarel out of the deck, I think just probably trying to thin a bit. Got that gold choice belt there, throwing that down on to the Hoopa. I think that, that card, that's an Astral Radiance, right? So Tyler must have gone to a pre-release. <laughs> yeah, getting some of the new cards early, that's one of the most fun things about a pre-release. But there is the boss's orders, bringing up the Galarian Moltres. We'll be able to take a knockout. Trinity Nova, Tyler going down to just two prize cards left. Will finally, looks like, grab that memory capsule. <laughs> We're sort of waiting in anticipation, right, to see if that is a grab. And there it is, grabs the memory capsule. So this is pretty much Justin's last turn, potentially, of use in these Shady Dealings abilities. Will be able to start things out with Mew? see what can be put together. Even something like a Clara in combination with some other damage modifiers. Look at this hand, looks like have access to another Galarian Moltres, but there's not really enough energy in this hand currently, but Justin's got to think through how to sequence this. You've got Mysterious Tail, you've got two Shady Dealings abilities at maximum on the Drizzile, so two trainer cards and an item off the top six, plus what else you can work through in this hand. We'll see how Justin puts this together. Yeah, if Justin could set up two Moltres this turn somehow, get a bunch of energies on multiple Moltres and threaten a escape rope KO this turn and then a boss's orders KO next turn, that would work. That is pretty difficult to do though because Justin does actually only play four basic darkness energy, so would need access to all of those pieces. He's already played one energy search, does have a second one in the deck. I'm, as long as it hasn't been, the second one didn't get played earlier. Also has the peers as a different option to set up. Yeah, a, mm -hmm. a different option to set up a Moltres, potentially. Yeah, I believe there are three in the discard pile because one was used to retreat the Mew Ooh. earlier on. But, oh, here's the Celebi. Okay, if Justin has the Grass Energy and the Choice Belt and also a boss's orders, he can win the game right here. There are two Intel uh, Dr Drizziles there in the hand. Escape Rope can get this Mew out of the active spot. Justin needs to find the Grass Energy, though, to pull this off. So I think what Justin's really deciding is how do I want to sequence this mysterious tale? It's like one piece short because Drizzile can find boss and the other Drizzile can find the choice belt or the energy search if the energy search is still in deck. We'll see you through this deck search what is available. Just I see the choice belt, I see the boss, but I don't know if there's a way to search the energy out. Potentially there is. There's the evolution incense. It looks like Justin thinning in preparation for the mysterious tale to look at these top six cards and try to find some way to put this together. Yeah, he is thinning as much as he possibly can right now. I'm trying to see. Justin plays a bunch of different artworks from, like, a bunch of eras, <laughs> so I'm not sure. I don't think I see an energy search in the deck, so I don't know what his way is to get the grass energy out unless that energy search is hiding in there, and I just can't quite see it. Crobat is the way to find it. Okay. 
Yeah, Crobat V is an inclusion that Justin added. If you saw it in Gustavo's winning deck That's game, right. uh, Justin decided, hey, I want to play some newer cards. It looks like also uh, potentially rocket some of these new supporter cards as well to really uh, guarantee the Crobat being able to be drawn into. But there it is off of the quick ball. So Justin's going to try to sequence this as best as possible to get every card into play. Can utilize Mysterious Tail and then play the escape rope to get that effect. Has double Drizzile in hand, a level ball to be thinned. And even then, the, the, you can even bench the Galarian Moltres to just draw an extra card off Crobat. Yeah, what he could do yeah. is, is just use Mysterious Tail, grab whatever card he can, and then use the Drizzile to get the other two pieces. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's got two Drizziles, that gets the boss and the Choice Belt. Then you bench the Celebi, you play the Escape Rope, you play the boss, you get the Choice Belt, and then you just try to Dark Asset for as many cards as possible. There's wow. the Choice Belt, that's one of the pieces. That is a big time grab. Looks like has access to the choice belt. Can now maybe utilize that Drizzile to draw an extra card to maybe thin another Pokemon out of the deck or yep. get some more pieces out of the hand. Yeah, could even grab like belt. a Quick Ball or something off the Drizzile now to thin the hand down even more so you can draw more cards off of the Crobat. A lot of options to work with, but that's got to feel good to find one of the pieces you are already going to look for off of the Drizzile to make things happen. Celebi is already in hand. Neither Drizzile played rope. So things are possible. Look at this deck. Only This one, is like yeah. a very all-in play. If mm -hmm. Justin goes for this, it's like I'm winning the game this turn or I'm probably going to just lose this game. So he's just got to debate right now and determine at this point, is this the play? Is this my route to victory? And am I going all-in on it? And right now, it looks like the answer is yes. I don't blame him. Go all-in. Send it. Give it your best effort. This is the way you got to close this game out as Bieber will come up into the active. Not a big deal for now. It's really going to come down to can Justin find this one copy of Grass Energy in the deck. Celebi comes up, that amazing rare Celebi. First Drizzile into play. This Shady Dealings will almost certainly grab the boss's orders or a potential way to thin out some more cards. There is a Quick Ball in there, so yep. as you mentioned, that is a potential route. Yeah, I think Justin can actually play down to a zero-card hand with what he's got. Boss's orders can be grabbed here. There's another Drizzile. He can grab Quick Ball off the second Drizzile. Quick Ball away the Moltres that's in hand. Just burn the level ball, play it, and then Crobat draw six cards and try to find the one Grass Energy available in the deck. It looks like it's going to be that exact play. Those old Diamond and Pearl Quick Balls that we've had eroded so we can play them again. Looking to discard what is going to be the Galarian Moltres, the level ball to fail, and it will be potentially a, one of the biggest yeah, Crobats yeah. we have seen all weekend so far. The full Crobat for six seems pretty good to me. Oh, uh, there's a... Yeah, so, I mean, it, this is the play. He's got the boss's orders there on the right. He's got to play that, bring up the Hoopa, Crobat, Dark Asset, drawing six cards, and I can't tell. It's about... 15-ish cards in deck. Pretty decent odds to find it. Let's see it. Here we go. Six cards. Is the grass energy there? No. He does not find the grass energy. That is a massive whiff. And now Justin has to kind of scramble here and figure out what other route to victory do I have. He needs to take two prizes. Can maybe pull off a Moltres next turn, but both of them are in the discard pile. I think has Clara available potentially, but... Clara is not going to, or Moltres alone is not quite going to be enough to pick up a knockout on something like the Arceus, assuming Tyler does retreat into this. No, it's going to be even harder next turn because the Memory Capsule can now go onto the Jolteon That's right, yeah. and shut off the future Shady Dealings. So has to put something together with this hand exactly. Can, again, thin the deck out. There was still a fair amount of cards, so it wasn't a, uh, a crazy ask. It was a, uh, a yeah. pretty reasonable yeah, ask It was probably like a, like a 35, 40%, mm. but it was Justin's best play, and he just kind of missed, did not quite get there, and just has to pass the turn over to Tyler. That feels so painful, and the very first thing Tyler does is slap down that memory camps capsule. Hard retreats this Hoopa, gets it out of the active spot, can also just bring another energy back and attach to it. I wonder if Tyler will put uh, too many energies on it in case Justin has a way to get back the Celebi. Yeah, and you see Justin checking, like, hey, that, that's two, right? <laughs> two energies on there. Not quite enough, even with a choice belt, to take this knockout onto Hoopa. As we will see the Marnie get played as well. Marnie in combination with Jolteon, such a powerful combination of cards. And at this point, I'm just wondering if you're Justin, you know this game has taken a while. You can assume at least 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Do you, do you maybe consider just understanding that my outs to win this game are so slim? Do I maybe just pick it up and go to the second game? Justin's a very smart player, and if he's playing this out, he feels like he has a realistic path to victory. There's the Clara as the top deck. 
So that can bring back the Moltres, but Choice Belt is already gone. Yeah, and Justin is just going to scoop it, uh, move on to game number two. And that is a pretty solid win there from Tyler. What a close game. If Justin had found the Grass Energy, he would have been the victor in game number one. But instead, Tyler moves to 1-0 and here in this set in round number nine. Yeah, not only did you lose that game, but you gave up deck information that Celebi is in your deck. So now Tyler can maybe plan accordingly to yeah. try to uh, approach it in a different situation of saying, uh, I want to really try to bait you out to use your choice belt. So that's no longer an option to get a one-hit knockout. But again, time is of the essence. We're at about 20 minutes left in this round. Once we get things shuffled up, we'll have to play one to two more games. A tie does not do these players much. It maybe gets them some points later on in a top 128 situation to squeak out a few points. But the same goal is on both these players' minds. Make day two, try and advance the top eight cut, give it your best in the second day of competition. So something Tyler can try to do in this game is maybe after knowing the Celebi Amazing Rare is in Justin's deck, can just put one less energy on the Hoopa. You don't have to put that third energy down until you are attacking with it. And Energy Press is reliant on how many energy you have attached. So Tyler can really control how much damage the Celebi does throughout the game. Also, of course, getting the big charm on the Hoopa would also put it out of range from being KO'd by the Celebi since Celebi deals 120 with a Choice Belt, times two for weakness, 240. Hoopa's got a base of 220, but with the Big Charm, that boosts it all the way up to 250 damage. It looks like Justin understands, I need to keep things up. I need to get the pace here. I need to win, somehow win a quick game too. As players draw on their opening hands, we'll see what the outs are. Justin's got, got something to work with. We'll see who elects to go first and second. Hands not looking too solid right off the bat. Uh, right, off the, right away for Tyler as we get into prize cards. Ooh, that Shady Dealings and Teleon prize can be a pretty big deal. You do have a Q copies. And look at that, another memory capsule prize. And two Arceus V as well, and an Arceus V star. Kind of awkward prizes for both players. Nothing too detrimental, but nothing that you love to see there in the prizes that you won't have access to. Looks like Tyler started the Galarian Zigzagoon, and Justin did choose to go first. Slaps down the Moltres, but just passes over to Tyler. That's all... He had available this turn. And all Tyler does is just play the Marty to start <laughs> things out. Neither player really having an ideal turn one. Tyler here going to be hoping to find an Arceus and an Energy, but we know two Arceus in the prizes makes it much less likely that you'll find one. Crobat V can draw two cards. Is there an out to an Arceus? No. Yeah, now you put that two prizer fighting weak Pokemon in play. Has to capture energy the Zigzagoon to get what is most likely going to be the Arceus. It seems like the most reasonable line. I guess there's a, a line where you grab Eevee to maybe threaten something the following turn with memory capsule. But uh, as Tyler's about to find out, you're going to yet again have one memory capsule and the prize is unavailable to you. This is a pretty good hand from Justin off of the Marnie. Has a lot of different supporters options. Obviously, research being a solid one. Could also even go for the peers this turn, play things a little slower, get an energy, go for the keep calling, does, and use the evolution incense next turn to get like a rapid strike Urshifu. Mew is a pretty solid top deck, though Justin may just want to go in with a research and just draw a bunch of cards this turn. Looks like the Marnie fared well for Justin, has access to Drizzile right off the bat, able to get that off of the evolution incense. There's the quick ball, getting rid of the peers. Looks like Rapid Strike Urshifu will be the grab for Justin. This is what you want when you're setting up. You, need, you now have your Drizzle in play. It can become an Atelier on the following turn. You're using these Shady Dealings while you can. Yep. And more importantly, you've got a Moltres ready as a threat. You've got the Urshifu down as a threat. Lots of different options. And the uh, even the Mysterious Tail Mew can come in and do some, uh, do some digging and find you some more of those trainer cards. It's really funny to me that Tyler chose uh, Valued setting up the Eevee over an Arceus. Uh, because he knows just how strong Jolteon is against Justin's deck. So if he can establish that really quickly, it's tough for Justin to really do much. Yeah, very nice grabs. Has the Sobble, the Rapid Strike Energy. Justin understands that there is a potential for Jolteon to come down next turn. Doesn't want to clog the bench up with too right. many Sobble, but it looks like there is the Quick Ball top deck. So the next card being Quick Ball yep. would have been a huge grab. Technically not the next card since that card was thinned out of the deck with the Capture Energy, but nevertheless, very happy to see that this turn, able to get that into play, maybe even get off a Trinity Charge to power up some Pokemon on the bench like the Hoopa or another Arceus. But when you're benching this, you really want to get Dunsparce down as well. Otherwise, this Arceus could be in a world of hurt very quickly. Research will be played, drawing seven new cards, looking for the Jolteon Memory Capsule. There's Jolteon right away. Does Tyler find the one Memory Capsule in deck? He does draw into it. 
Wow, what a big time grab there. Finds the one of memory capsule. That is going to be huge at slowing things down. Yeah, that second one chilling in the prizes. So that was the only one in Tyler's deck. And he's just able to draw into it off of the research. Didn't even have to Starbirth to set the combo up. No one even finds the Bidoof to get Pit Barrel on next turn. Things are looking so solid for Tyler. And now Justin is left with the almost unplayable hand. Can't play any of these Inteleon pieces oh, whatsoever man. because of that Jolion. And he just passes, has nothing else. Tyler is in an amazing spot. Gets an energy onto the Arceus. Now needs to find that Arceus V-Star. Ooh, debating playing the Marnie. You know Justin just literally passed, so I like this decision. Play it a little slower. Just go for the Bibarel. See if you can find an Arceus. Doesn't look like he was able to, so now you can still go for the Marnie, and that's not too bad. You don't mind giving your opponent a new hand because you're going to be pretty far ahead. Yeah, and mm -hmm. switching into the air balloon, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Marnie is one of those weird situations here where you need to find the Arceus V-Star to keep pacing in your court. But at the same time, you give your opponent outs to potentially find what they're looking for. But Oh, Justin just drew two scoop up nets, <laughs> choice belt, and a basic energy. Yeah, and the Dunce Bar's coming down. Do we see the Arceus V-Star as well? The Ultra, Ultra Ball, Ball will find it. Tyler's got it all. Everything he could want on this last couple of turns, he has been able to find. Can use Starbirth, but is there even anything he needs to get here? He's pretty set up. He says, you know what? I'm going to use it while I can. Starbirth gets any two cards out of the deck. Big Charm seems like not a bad choice. And this is not horrible. You sort of identified in game one that my hand will not be disrupted. Uh, no, no disruption cards like Marty over on Justin's side, so you can guarantee grabbing those pieces out of the deck, getting them in play, and Big Charm again, just in case your Dunsparce falls, means that your Arceus will stay standing with a little bit of HP to remain. Looks like eyeing up the path as well. That will shut down any potential Crobat, yeah, Justin, Crobat right? shenanigans later on to draw through the deck. Very smart from Tyler. There's the knockout. Truly right. Nova. We'll have to see this accelerates energy, but this is big for Justin. Justin. What is the top deck? Justin. Oh, that's an air balloon. That's pretty good. Has the scoop of nuts as well. Really wants to find an evolution incense here. A way to get the rapid strike Urshifu VMAX. Does he find it? I think, is that five cards? That might have been six. I thought he only drew five there. It does just grab the level ball, though. Yeah, it does eye up the level ball. There is the air balloon onto the Mew. Has the, ba has the basic dark energy, so... Could see this attack into the Arceus V-Star because that big charm is on. It means that it will not be dealing enough to knock out this Urshifu. Rapid Strike, Urshifu V. It looks like still eyeing up Sobbles, even staring down in the face of Jolteon with a memory capsule. Yeah, it could still come in with a solid hit with the 100 Furious Blows. Uh, could go for a Strafe just for 30 and run into a Sobble for the turn, potentially. But yeah, he will just go for 100 Furious Blows. Deals 150. And Tyler draws for turn, has another Marnie to chain together if he wants it. The only awkward part about Tyler's board right now is he doesn't have any great Pokemon that he's setting up on the bench, right? There's no spot for a second Arceus. There's no Hoopa VM play. And if Tyler is relying on attacking with a Crobat VMAX, that's weak to fighting. Yeah, the only way to get a clean Pokemon into play right away would be something like a Raihan onto an Arceus V. But even then, you're dealing 110 damage, but... Uh, we will just see the Trinity Nova dealing 180 damage. 180, uh, yep. So just short of knocking out this Urshifu, can swing again into the Arceus, and I see, I see a route chip. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I see here. You can hit this Arceus twice, leave it with 10. Yoga Loop could be a potential to maybe steal surprises, and then from there take that extra turn to knock out the Jolteon and maybe get your abilities back online. Okay, yeah. So let's see if that's what Justin wants to go for. Is it the Yoga Loop Strat or? Does he evolve this VMAX okay, okay. and go for the GMAX Rapid Flow? And this seems like a solid choice as well because you take the Dunsparce out of play. And of course, that Jolteon is going to be the first target right away. Jolteon dealing so much hurt to Justin's board, unable to utilize any of these shady dealings. But uh, it looks like really valuing getting rid of these targets, going to opt to get rid of the B Barrel and the Jolteon. So this time, Eyeing up, not even trying to take care of the Dunsparce. Yeah, there's already like... a bunch of damage on the Arceus, so this mm -hmm. makes a ton of sense. Yeah, the route maybe to try to take a knockout on the Arceus and then finish off that Crobat V on the bench as an easy two prizes at any point during the game. Also getting rid of B-Barrel, takes away that draw engine consistently, and it leaves Tyler with a pretty awkward hand. However, the bench space being opened means that we could see the Hoopa V get grabbed, powered up off this Trinity Nova before an Arceus potentially gets knocked out and set this Pokemon up. But no, yet again, prioritizing Eevee, even with a second memory capsule in the prize cards. Grabs the Eevee. Looks like Tyler's playing pretty quickly here. Has Evolution Incense. Yeah, 
going to go back into the deck with that incense. Yeah, maybe just grabbing the Jolteon out prematurely so you don't draw into it again. But actually, no, looks like eyeing up the Crobat VMAX. I always, I always shudder a little bit when you're playing against these fighting type decks because it is scary to put a 300 HP Pokemon that is three prizes into play. It actually is pretty decent here, though, because Justin is a few turns away from setting up another Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. So what Tyler may be going for is putting this high HP Pokemon in play that can't be KO'd by the Galarian Moltres. Because what Justin's route most likely was looking like to win this game was going to be Fiery Wrath into the Arceus into a way to one-hit KO the Crobat VMAX. So now you're forcing Justin to find like a boss's orders this turn. And look at that, the other memory capsule grabbed off the prizes. A big time grab can get that back online the following turn. But you know what is online? Shady dealings here for Justin. Finally, Active can utilize this card to find any one piece out of the deck and eyes up boss's orders. I feel like Justin will chase after the Arceus V-Star, try to knock it out with the Moltres here, and then maybe try to establish a second Urshifu so that that can easily one-hit knock out the Crobat. Yeah, Justin didn't care about knocking out Dunsparce because Crobat was going to be the way that he closed the game out. Yeah, a little bit more HP now that it has VMAX evolved. Here is the Mysterious Tail. Going to make sure, one, two, three, four, five, one more card here for six. Only option is scoop on that, but hey, that's fine. You can reutilize this Drizzile or wait for the following turn to maybe put something else together. But uh, I think we will maybe be seeing Justin go back into the deck. Moltres only dealing 100 and 220 damage this turn, but uh, still a lot of damage to this Crobat. Uh, yeah. Sort of accidentally tossing the deck towards. You can tell Justin is in a hurry. He needs to finish this game quickly in order yeah. to potentially squeak out a quick game three maybe does attach the basic darkness energy to the Galarian Moltres. I expect to see the boss's orders bring up the Arceus and try and target that down for the turn. Scoop of Net can reset that Drizzile and can use another Shady Dealings if he wants to. And yeah. now has that boss's orders and does bring up Arceus, so this will be the way Justin takes two prizes this turn. Yeah, there's a will, there's a way. Justin's going to play to every out possible can utilize another Shady Dealings, I believe, at this point. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, I believe that Sobble still has been in play. Is that Urshifu in hand? I think it is. So Justin could mm -hmm. bench that this turn. That becomes a little risky because it's a boss's orders target, but there's not really a way for Tyler to one-hit KO it. So, I don't know. Justin does just take the knockout. Will take two prizes, go to just two remaining. And Tyler sitting with two prizes left. This is a very close game, Ethan. Yeah, there is a line for Justin, but this is going to be big. There's Does the Tyler memory capsule. Have the Jolteon. The Raihan can guarantee it at this point. He can get it right out with the Raihan, of course, accelerating an energy from the discard pile, and then now grabs any one card out of the deck, and I feel like Jolteon is definitely the grab here. Yeah, this is a very solid spot. You can get the Jolteon into play, but leaving this Crobat in the active is so scary because there is potential Raihan plays over on Justin's side to put together an Urshifu in a single turn, but this is where I think you've got to say, yeah. I'm locking you, all of your abilities. I don't think you have the cards to make this happen. I'm going to pretty much put myself at the best odds possible as we see the Max Cutter out from the Crobat VMAX going to one prize card. I think if Justin can find Raihan, he can win the game. Does he have the Raihan? I don't see it. There's a Cynthia's Ambition. I don't think he can set it up this turn. No, I'm thinking maybe you can put the Urshifu in play for a turn to buy yourself a turn to maybe set up a, a G-Max Rapid Flow to close the game out. Yeah, that could be a potential. Just gotta, gotta hope that Tyler doesn't have boss's orders to close it out with only one prize card remaining. Still completely doable here for Justin, but yeah. it's going to be very difficult. Has Mew the Mysterious Tale, but as the time clicks down, it's going to be even harder for one of these players to finish, especially if you go to a game three. If you're Tyler, you have to be hoping you close this game out here. Otherwise, a tie really does not do either of you good in the long run. Yeah, at this point, neither player wants to tie. They both want to get a victory in this match to move on to day two. Justin evolving that Drizzile, knowing that he's not going to get to utilize Shady Dealings, but just wants to thin that piece out of the hand, because I think we're going to see a Cynthia's Ambition this turn and draw a bunch of cards to try to utilize whatever other pieces for future turns that he can get out of the deck and just hope that Tyler does not have boss's orders to close things out. Remember, Tyler discarded, I think, two boss's orders at the very start of this game. 
Yeah, I don't know if there's any more ways to gust up Pokemon, only opting to play the two boss. So okay. if both of them are gone, then there's no option to bring something up. Finds the Rapid Strike energy, it looks like. But unfortunately, that was off the Mysterious Tail. So not quite what you want, but what you're looking for the following turn, for sure, is at least able to potentially get some more cards into play. Is able to utilize Palpad to bring back it looks like eyeing up the boss's orders and the professor's research to maybe either dig through the deck or gust up a Pokemon that could cause a little bit of problems here for Justin. Just wants to put some more consistency in the deck off of the Cynthia's Ambition. This will be big to see what this grabs. Yeah, and it's going to be tough for a game three to finish. Even if Justin finds a way to win this game, we've only got seven minutes left on the clock at this point. So it is going to be uh, likely that this either ends as a victory for Tyler or a tie for both players. A bunch of cards drawn off the Cynthia, but how much help can Justin find? Does find the Raihan at least for the following turn. I think that's what you need to hope in order to close this match out. We are going to see the retreat into the right. Urshifu. Here is the draw. Ordinary Rod, but your Crobat is already in play. You can't quick ball here for anything else. I feel like at this point, the only route you can go for is to try and, and maybe buy some turn time for yourself. I think that Tyler understands that taking a knockout opens up Raihan to easily access this Rapid Strike energy. Well, if Tyler took a knockout, he'd just win the game with just one prize card oh. remaining. So. Yeah, my bad. My, yeah, yeah, at, yeah. at this point, Raihan not going to be useful oh, for no, Justin. No. Justin's going to have to be digging through the deck with like a researcher. I think he's got Bird Keeper in hand. So he's got plenty of ways to try to find a bunch of cards, needing to find that Rapid Strike energy in the deck and also has the VMAX in hand already, which is a huge piece in order to G-Max Rapid Flow. G-Max Rapid Flow is going to be a big key to making this happen, as well as another line. I think as long as this is active, I think Justin actually has the cards to make this work. We'll have to see. But still, actions over on Tyler has a couple plays to make. It looks like just going to go ahead and grab that Arceus V off of the quick ball. Looks like discussing something between the judges and players, but hopefully all that gets resolved and figured out. Uh, this is going to be a big time turn for both, but it looks like we have some sort of uh, an issue over on cards that were played. It looks like the Ordinary Rod shuffling back in some of those key pieces later on, but it looks like we're all good to go at this point. Uh, the Crobat is eyeing up a retreat potentially into something else, but no, it's going to be attacking here, and he's yeah, got the cards. Justin's got it. The Bird Keeper Bird plus Keeper. the Fighting Energy, and that's going to be it. Justin's going to force game three, but we're winding yes. on on five minutes. I mean, at minimum, right, you force out a tie at the worst in the situation, but it's just so unlikely that we're going to see a third game finish. Yeah, I, I actually am pretty surprised that Tyler didn't choose to Stealth Poison there, move that Crobat to the bench, force Justin to find the Rapid Strike energy in order to G-Max Rapid Flow for the game. But since Tyler just an announced Max Cutter, all Justin had to do was move the Urshifu out of the active, evolve it, throw the Fighting Energy down, and he had those pieces in hand. Yeah. Closes it out, ties the game up. And with only four and a half minutes remaining, it's going to take a player getting pretty unlucky for this game to finish naturally. I think both players understand that they need to go quick. Neither of these players really wants to draw this match. You walk away with some championship points, but everyone here has the same goal in mind to make day two. You can see it on Justin's face. You can see the expression. He's, he's playing fast. He's trying to shuffle this deck up. Understands has been in this situation, I'm sure, countless times on the win and in throughout his Pokemon career. And look at that. Deck's already presented, ready to get shuffled up. Yeah. And uh, Tyler does the same. This is going to be, excuse me, a big opening hand. What do these players draw? What are their outs on these, following, on these first couple of turns? We'll see what each player has available. Looks like Justin actually starting with a mulligan. So that just, more annoyingly than anything, obviously giving your opponent an extra card isn't great, but it's taking up more time because you have to shuffle once again. Both Eevee in the prizes for Tyler. Both Eevee, that means no option for Jolteon in the early game, which is what has been setting Justin back so far. That is a huge deal in this matchup. That is a big time opening. The problem is the clock again, it is plus three turns. Finds a basic though, does able to get sobbled down, multiple copies and a level ball as well. What you want to see, you need to put aggression on as soon as the second turn of the game. Prize is going out quickly. Both so Moltres prized and the pal pad as well as the boss's orders. Yeah, not too big of a deal to see the Moltres in there because as you take them is when they're going to be useful, not er useful in the early game, of course. So nothing too bad. I expect both of these players to be playing pretty quickly here. Either of them would love to make it into day two, but they need a win. A tie is no good to either player. No good indeed. Has to get energy attachment for Arceus. All you really want. The quick ball as well. Looks like eyeing up 
uh, the Hoopa, if that was not already benched from the hand. I bet that Tyler is looking for an Eevee and is getting the sad news that there are no Eevee in the deck. Yeah, not going to have access to that card. That's going to be a pretty big deal right off the bat to really slow down the game for Justin. It's worked in game one and most of game two, and not having the ability to do that is going to be a big deal in this close game three that's winding down. We've got two and a half minutes on the clock. Quick pass over to Justin. We'll have the ability to play supporter cards. Big time grab there with the Rapid Strike energy, but I don't think there's a single quick ball to be able to find out this Rapid Strike Urshifu that you really want to get this energy on super quickly. Really values the Mew to try to find a quick ball here off this Mysterious Tail. Yeah, Justin is going to play pretty quickly. I think we're going to see some fast shuffles, a lot of tapping of his opponent's deck and just trying to get through this game. Scoop up net. Yeah, Justin recognizes, hey, I have to find a quick ball here. Let's see if he can do it. There it is, quick ball. It doesn't even look at the rest of the cards. Justin playing so, so fast because he knows that this game is not uh, going to have that much time. Needs to get the Urshifu, get the energy down, and put on a lot of pressure. And Justin is definitely aware at this point that Tyler did not have access to Eevee because I feel like that's what Tyler would have grabbed right away because it's so good at slowing Justin down. Definitely. 100% you want to get that down right away to slow things out. Has the a research. research. And there's the Urshifu, the falling turn. The energies as well peers. So many options. The Drizzile as well. as We see things just get passed over right away. The Zigzagoon can come down and deal some damage. Is there the cards in hand to make this happen? No. Mm. Has to Marnie. And that's got to feel so unfortunate for Justin, you had all the pieces you needed next turn pretty much to get yourself there. We'll see what this hand warrants. Very solid cards, though. Does have a scoop up net as well as a Drizzle. And Tyler finds the Arceus V Star. Starbirth can go get the double turbo energy so he can pull off an attack this turn and start to power up a Pokemon. I wonder if he'll put a bunch of energies on this Hoopa or not. Yeah, this is a super fast paced game. Keeping up with both these players. We're, we're going on to a minute left in the round. Plus three turns, so this is relevant. Play is going to slow down, I believe, a little bit once we get into plus three turns, but getting through, it will be very important to note who is on turn zero as we go into this final end game of game number three. Yeah, and if Tyler attacks and Justin does not draw a card right away, Tyler will be turn zero, which is a big deal because being turn zero means you only get one additional turn, whereas if you're turn one and turn three, that's two additional turns. So this is a big deal. This will be Justin's second to last turn, most likely, unless this turn is less than 20 seconds on his side. It needs to go quick, quick, quick. Finds the energy search off the top. That will guarantee the hit into this Arceus. And really wisely, Tyler only puts two energy onto the Hoopa. Mm -hmm. It can still get one more energy to knock out an Urshifu VMAX, but it's not in danger of being KO'd by a Celebi. We're going to see the scoop up net get played. It's going to go into this Urshifu. I think maybe you wanted to play something like an Evolution Incense before to maybe get a G-Max Rapid Flow. A little bit of missed sequencing there potentially. I feel like you may want to do that, but no. Just going to go for the Cynthia's Ambition. Uh, oh, it looks like eyeing up the Urshifu there. Has the Cynthia's Ambition. Yep. But, he's uh, just playing fast. He, I mean, he's uh, going yeah. for the, he's going he's for going the rapid flow. Rapid yeah, flow, he's going for yeah. rapid flow. Yeah, he we're just going to go care, fast. He doesn't care about if the Urshifu is evolved before it comes to the active, because he's not using that first attack. He's using the second one, the G-Max Rapid Flow. And time has expired on our end. We'll skip confirmation on which players are turn zero and one. Justin is going to be turn zero. We'll have two turns to close this game. It's not possible with five Pokemon in play. Even if you find a way to yeah. G-Max Rapid Flow twice, Justin's just going to play to the outs, see how the end game would look, especially yeah, when your friend gets no EV down. You also never know how, you know, what the players have decided. Sometimes players will be like, if you're ahead on prizes, you know, I'll give you the win in this game so that mm -hmm. one of us can make day two. So maybe these players have agreed whoever's ahead on prizes after plus three turns is going to be the one who's the victor in this match. So that might be what we're playing to at this point. Able to get down the Celebi, another Sobble, so the options are there to potentially close something out. As Justin has options to work with, looks like the Inteleon in hand as well for the following turn, and the last remaining turn on Justin's side. There's the G-Max Rapid Flow. It will target down the Bidooth and the Dunsparce. Huge. Justin's going to go down to four prize cards left, taking that Moltres and Palpad from the prize cards. His action is on Tyler. Has the energy for the Hoopa. Wow. And is going to boss the Celebi right away, recognizing the threat, the thing that can deal with the Hoopa on his side. Takes that out, takes a prize card, and now it'll be back over to Justin, who will now be turn number two. This is Justin's last turn of the game. What's he going to do with it? Well, the knockout is lined up in hand already for Justin. Has the fighting energy, it looks like, and the air balloon to get that okay. pivot. Dunspar's no longer in play. No big charm on that Arceus, so but that is potential. But then Tyler can just come up and one-hit KO the Urshifu is the problem because Hoopa yeah. is, of course, a psychic type thanks to that two-faced ability. So, ah, yeah, this is not looking good for Justin. Even if this game was playing out past these two turns, I feel like 
Justin's not in a great spot. He can't really feel safe about Gale thrusting this Arceus and taking two prizes whenever Hoopa is sitting there on the bench. Urza will come up into the active. Justin drawing a card to start, maybe finding an Inteleon, a big piece. No, just a quick ball. I have to see what supporters are maybe there in the discard pile. The Raihan is in there in the discard pile. I have to feel like that's the only way to get another G-Max Rapid Flow up. But even and then, Justin, you're not taking a knockout on the yeah, Arceus. Yeah, Justin did take a Pal Pad off of his prize card. So that is an option. He could get Choice Belt and then use G-Max Rapid Flow on the Arceus plus the Zigzagoon to go to just one prize card remaining. And then even if Tyler takes a knockout on the Hoopa, they're tied on prizes. So... I don't actually know how this is going to resolve. Justin does have the Shady Dealings in Tellian, so he can get any two trainers out of the deck here. He can piece together a ton of different plays for sure. Eyeing up the Clara out of the deck as well as maybe potentially a way to get something like a damage modifier in play. Has the potential to grab energies out of the deck. There are limitless options here for Justin, but just going to take some time to think through what is my best route to victory. Scoop up net as well to recycle. Doesn't seem like a bad play. You know that your Inteleon engine is going to be online and active for at least another two turns. So uh, this turn and the next turn. So looks like that will be the, uh, the grab. Scoop up net and Kalara. We'll have to see what he can put together with, this, with these two cards. And if these players has, have agreed that, you know, whoever is ahead on prizes at the end of plus three turns is the person who will be the winner of the match, then that could really affect how you play, potentially, right? Because you want to play to take more prize cards, not necessarily to have the better board position, assuming the game, you know, playing out to its full extent. Yeah, it looks like the, between the judges, we have confirmation. I think these players are just playing to draw, is what I'm being told. So uh, I don't know how we'll end up figuring out, but we'll have to see exactly how things devolve. These last couple of turns are important. So we'll have to see what the line is. There's the scoop up net on to the Urshifu. Nope, smartly going to go into the Mew to be able to utilize Mysterious Tail. The fighting energy down as well means this Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX is dealing enough damage to take a knockout onto this Arceus. And uh, Justin's going to go on to two prize cards as things go over to Tyler's last turn. Justin does grab the Quick Ball from the deck. No, maybe not. Can get any trainer card here from the Shady Dealings. Has already played a supporter. We see that Clara there in play. Justin did just play that. Got back the Celebi, which is now sitting on the bench once again. Looks like eyeing up the Cheryl to potentially heal off later on uh, as the turns are going to be expiring. But again, there are potentials for whatever these players do decide between each other as the next Drizzile will come down. Eyeing up the Escape Rope. Okay, so has the potential to force Tyler to send up Maybe an awkward Pokemon like that Galarian Zigzagoon. So uh, Justin's really just trying to put together the routes uh, that are best as possible to close this game out. Finally going to see Mysterious Tail. What is the grab? Energy Search is the only potential grab off of Mysterious Tail. Looks like just debating, do I want to put this into the hand? Do I value having this maybe if my opponent plays a Marnie to put the cards at the bottom? But uh, it looks like just going to fail the cards. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, did fail it. Hadn't shuffled the deck, so I feel like that must mean he wants to go back in. Does have Quick Ball in hand. We are going to see the retreat into the Urshifu. Yeah, just takes a knockout. knockout. And all Tyler has to do is attack, and he'll be ahead on prize cards, but unless these players have any sort of agreement or something, this will just end the game in a draw. Tyler going down to just one prize card remaining. Justin has the Moltres and probably would be able to power it up with the Intellion to just take a knockout on this Hoopa since Tyler only has one prize card. So Justin really just one turn away from winning this game. Yeah, this is just a, a heartbreaking decision or just situation in general where you're so close to victory on both sides. There's no argument to say you can pull something out. Yeah, with that Moltres, Justin would be able to potentially take a knockout, but uh, we'll see what happens. The match is going to end in a draw on the surface of things here. With these players falling just short of the match points needed to make top cut at this point. Yeah, confirmation it was a tie, so neither player will move on to day two. Definitely heartbreaking to see a tie in round number nine. These players have played so long long throughout this day nine rounds of 50 minutes best of three plus three turns these games are so so close and neither player could really quite close it out just one or two turns away from finishing that set
yeah, it, it's so heartbreaking when you're one or two turns away and the winner moves on to the second day. But I think both these players understand that they want the championship points potentially to walk away with that. I know Justin is in uh, clearly in the race for top 16 in North America for stipends. Definitely. Really wants to move on to day two to get some more points. But uh, on the other side of things, right, people want championship points. They want to get those finishes. Uh, if you're not really motivated or haven't set 